Pow! That's all I got. Vlog number two. No matter those. What are we gonna do? We're gonna do a studio. We're gonna tour. talk about stuff. By the banner. Right here we have a banner. What you know about it. have you seen us at a show or two or five? Anyways, we're gonna do a uh, a studio tour. Okay, we're gonna show you how we got down in the recording process mm -hmm. of the Awaken album. Coming soon. It's already out. <laughs> it's already out. Yeah. Oh, I'm showing my drink. Tell them what's in it. Beets, celery, grapefruit juice, a little bit of kale, and garlic. Vampire powder. Oh, let's go on goddamn tour then. Hi. My name is Timothy Dalton. You may have seen me from James Bond films in the past. Today we're going to do a tour of the studio. Let's show them. Hey, I'll take that. Put it down. Let's start over here. What do we got? What are we working with? This is Caleb's amp over here, okay? This is where we recorded our latest album called Awaken, and this is one of the signature amps that we use for guitar work. So, just a Black Star, half stack, 50 watt tube head, HT Club 50. I'll be dead. It's an HT venue series, and uh, we've taken it live, and we thought that it was appropriate to use it in the record, so. We pretty much just mic'd it with an RE20, Microphone. Pedal board. What do we got going on? <laughs> I'm very proud of this and I'm just gonna tell you guys why because I made it myself mm. 100% mm. this if you flip it this way and you set it on top of a $150 Yamaha keyboard from Kmart to be specific. That's the piece you put the sheet music on on the keyboard? That's exactly what Oh, I never knew that. Now and we so know. then you just like pack it up with like pieces of wood and cardboard and electrical tape. Then Velcro mm -hmm. the opposite side and put your pedals. And so my daisy chain just goes through the board and it connects from the guitar into the tuner into my SD1, which is my overdrive pedal that I use as a booster or as a pedal to dirty up my cleans. And then into the chorus, which is a, a, a CH1 boss pedal, then into my Mott Factory Moore uh, pedal, into my delay, and into my Hall of Fame TC Electronics reverb pedal, and then out into the amp. Show the acoustic that we recorded all the, all the scratch tracks first. My trusty Taylor 114 cutaway edge model, which I used in New York when I Went there and uh, I did some busking and some uh, quite a few gigs with it. So I cut my teeth as a solo artist with it. And we also recorded the record with it. So. And how are your teeth now? You may have seen this one in a video, in the hours video, right? This is the same one we broke a lamp with. I say we, even though I wasn't in the video at all. But you so know what? I know. Yeah, that's just a shit. It hasn't been the same ever since that impact. I'm just kidding. What does this say? It really hasn't. It's a Samic SG model. Samic Torino. Yes. The reason why we're showing you guys this is because I feel like there's the that stigma that you just need to either go and make your music on a computer or go the opposite route and, and just do it in a studio. And I think that there's a lot of uh, reward that's unspoken from building your own home studio or acquiring gear and knowledge to be able to take your music to wherever you wanted to take you to. This is the bass that I recorded on. This is a Epiphone Thunderbird uh, 4. It's f***ing beautiful. It's a 34 inch scale. We got the uh, the the mahogany body. We got the rosewood uh, fretboard Ooh, yeah. with the maple neck. Boom. Bam! They got Ernie Ball slinkies yeah. on it. Two humbucker pickups. Huh. Uh, add to cart now. Uh. And I said that because I remember because I read it off of the way the uh, I'm the a specs. hell of a hype man. So, uh, yeah, so this thing is a beast. And I actually play out of a, a, a custom, um, what's it, like a 250 watt head. I don't know the exact specs on that one. And then a Laney 410 cab. And this is my pedal board right here. I can't afford an Ampeg, which is what every guy who plays bass dreams of. So I got a DI scrambler to emulate the sound. And it works awesome with customs since I, I got it. all the customization. I got my compressor pedal I don't use so much anymore, but it's there in case I need it. And then my uh, my Donner DTI pedal. Do you pedal. use the compressor for I, recording? I, I used it to record. I don't really use it anymore live. Speaking of bass, track and bass, this is the amplifier that we use to track bass parts. And that's the Ampeg 
be a what is it 112 yep it's a 12 inch speaker yep. uh, that i got my hands on and the reason why i got it was because i wanted to be able to uh, mic bass guitar at a home studio environment so i did this and i also got my marshall mg50 to practice to put on headphones and stuff it's a solid state amp i have used it at a few shows and it has proven to be loud enough for that and then I run like a PA through what we're gonna show you guys, which is the console and the computer and everything. But yeah. Moving Here's on. <laughs> Tell me about this thing, man. Okay, so that is also a trusty piece of gear of mine by Personas. It's called the Studio Channel. I've used it for guitar tracking, vocal tracking, and bass, and even some percussion. And what I've done with it is whatever it is that I'm miking, I'm patching through this. It warms up the, the sound in a way that it puts it in the front. A lot of people don't really explain too, uh, too much about, about using preamps and changing the tone and the texture and also the size uh, or the shape of the, the sound itself. So when you're listening to the whole thing, everything is separate and you're putting it together. Uh, drums, guitar and everything, but everything has to have a certain identity. Part of that, that identity is defined by what the shape of the sound is. And this helps shaping the sound into that. Uh, the preamp itself will warm it up to uh, make it fall in a certain place so that then you can have your guitars in front or your vocals in front or, you know, making them a bit more pronounced, more, more present, uh, depending on whatever genre you want it to be. And this is my PA head. By Phonic, it's a PowerPod 820, 820. It's a 200 watt uh, PA head that I run just to be able to practice with the boys here at the studio. And um, we go down. What is this? This is a keyboard. It's a keyboard. Okay. Oh, iMac. And what we got down here? So the keyboard goes into the iMac. This is an Akai MPK Mini which is one of the latest things that I got is for MIDI tracking and you which we tracked all the drums for the electric or for the acoustic project yep yep and this is an example of a session that we have on Pro Tools which is what we used to record and uh, it was fun man I mean it gives us the ability to go back and retrack or you know uh, shape it in a way that we want so <laughs> By the way, these are our, our Yamaha studio speakers that we use. I got these a couple of years ago, and I use this along with uh, Pro Tools and the Mbox Pro con console, the interface that I'm using to uh, record the debut EP, which made pretty much the whole project happen. So. So where do you do vocals at? Alright, thank you and an adventure into the vocal booth. Ooh. Right over here. So don't ask me what the model is, but it's an AKG com uh, condenser mic that I'm using for vocals. And this is, yes, it's my walk-in closet, <laughs> so you gotta make it happen. Necessity is the mother of all inventions after all, so... The ambiance is... Uh, yeah. The acoustics shine. That's, that's it for... That's the studio tour. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what we use for the recording of a weekend, and most of what we use for the recording of uh, the new beginning, which was the debut EP and it's possibly what we're gonna keep on using for the next couple of years. So now that we're you're getting some We're recording at um, Neverland Ranch, Michael Jackson's old place. That too. <laughs> okay, so one thing, one important thing that we didn't wanna leave out of the video is uh, getting back to you guys on the music videos. So a couple of weeks ago, we told you all that we wanted to start a project in a series of four different music videos that we were gonna do. Right, so we're gonna do a video for Awaken. Ah, oh, did you see that? The hand movement was perfect. We're doing a video for Awaken. 
and uh, we're planning on doing three other music videos so stay tuned we're gonna show you a lot of goodies and a lot of different updates so that you can you know live the experience with us and we appreciate your support and your attention bye for now and uh, we'll see you at a show stay tuned for the next vlog and follow us on Instagram so that will be perfect sequence music we're on SoundCloud Facebook, uh, you can also find our music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, and uh, Reverb Nation. So we'll see you there. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> what was that? It's a telecopterodactyl. How does it sound? <laughs> now you know. Paracock Because it's my super short show. I'm a pigeon, dude. You should do that. It's mating season. Did John Legend get back to you? <laughs> yes! Yep. <laughs> Why did I stay in character as the pigeon when I answered your question? <laughs> yes! Oh, Jesus. I've got problems. We all do.